Hey everyone, my name is Connor. I'm one of the fourth year medical students at UC Irvine in sunny Southern California. And we're gonna do a micro board style question today. Um, this is great prep for step one and honestly kind of step two as well, but really focusing on how do we answer these questions? What is important and how can we use the question bank embedded in Sketchy to help us answer this? So first off, my way, I always read the last sentence first. Um, so which of the following organisms is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Again, I'm thinking of an organism. I know this is a micro question now and what is causing the symptom. So it just helps me hone in what I'm gonna focus on during the question step. I don't read the answer choices. I think it gives me some bias and the cognitive load is a little too much. So I skip that and read the question. I have a 27 year old woman uh, in the ED with fever, hypotension and a diffuse erythematous rash that looks like a sunburn. Uh, she's been menstruating and using high absorbency tampons. Uh, lab analysis reveals elevated white blood cell count, and it grows gram-positive cocci in clusters that are catalase-positive and coagulase-positive. Now, once you do enough of these questions, there's a few things here that can immediately help you answer this question, but you should rule out all the other answer choices as well. So when thinking of Staph aureus, there's a few things that lead me to Staph aureus. First off, uh, menstruating, high absorbency tampons. She's now, you know, fever, hypotensive. She's probably septic at this point. This makes me think of staph toxic shock, which most commonly is associated with leaving tampons in for too long. So that's the first thing that makes me think of that. Second thing, if you see gram positive cocci in clusters, typically that's staph. So right now I have a lot of evidence to think staph, but let's make sure that's really the right answer. Staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay, gram positive. So I can't really use the gram positive here. Um, really for a lot of these, I can't use the gram positive as a differentiating factor. Um, but I do know that staph epi one doesn't really cause this type of infection, um, but staph epi is catalase negative. So no cat in that sketch whatsoever. Strep pyogenes. This is your group A strep. This is typically gonna cause your strep pharyngitis. Um, so it doesn't really resemble this, uh, but if you want more uh, support, catalase negative as well. Uh, strep agalactiae, this is group B strep. This essentially just infects neonates and little infants. So less likely in a 27 year old woman, and it's catalase negative. Um, and then Ephi callus, again, gram positive, um, guess what? Catalase negative. Um, there was no cat in that sketch, I remember. And more so causes like UTIs and stuff. So right now, I can eliminate all of these based on catalase status, which the only way to really remember that is sketchy, being completely honest. Um, the other way is just knowing what is the most common condition that these cause. The tampon, staph toxic shock, there's way more staph aureus than any of these others. Um, so let's find out. Um, and it was uh, for a lot of the reasons that I said. So I wanna pull up the sketch and just kind of walk you through it real quick as well. Um, so when I pull up the sketch after I've watched it the first time, I go straight to symbol viewer right here. You can walk through realistically any of these symbols and just go and click through. Um, here you go, we're catalase positive, always looking for that catalase cat. Here is the uh, Red Sea, the coagulated river. So that helps me remind myself that it's uh, coag uh, positive. And that's really, you know, catalase and coag is really how you differentiate between multiple of these. Then I'm going to skip through, not going too fast. But what I do want to point out here, um, if we move on into right here. So the, the cape, the superhero cape. Um, this is a super antigen, hence the superhero cape. Um, this causes staph toxic shock syndrome or STSS. Um, this is the fever, the rash and shock. Um, and so if I go up here again, this is, you know, the skin peeling, the rash, that's the exfoliative portion of this. Um, so this is the specific part of the sketch that relates to uh, staph toxic shock syndrome, uh, but catalase positive coag over here. That also helps me answer this sketch. Uh, Staph aureus, one of the, you know, the first sketchy that came out and one of the most important bugs for step one. Uh, so hopefully you learned something today.